thought that was pretty good picnic. Everybody was nice. Kids were nice. I got my money. No problems with that at all. So uh, I'm happy. Thinking back on it, some things come to mind about selling this kind of event. If your current advertising efforts are already enough to bring in a satisfactory stream of your meat and potatoes work, the same advertising will bring calls for picnics as well. But both types of shows, the birthday party and the picnic, usually happen on weekends. So if you're getting just about enough birthday party work, even if you're not quite getting all you can handle, additional paid advertising directed specifically at picnics will work against you. You'll only be paying to displace birthday jobs you've already paid to secure. Think instead of maximizing the efficiency of the advertising you already do. Check which ads generate calls and which don't. On the other hand, if face painting or balloon twisting is all you do, your advertising picture is completely different. Yellow Pages advertising is almost certainly too expensive for you. Your leads will have to come from people you can reach with little or no advertising budget. What you need more than anything else in that case is exposure to get your work and your contact information, making a direct impression on as many people as possible. You have to be very consciously and constantly marketing yourself. And it's easy to slip back into a comfort level that's lower than the target you originally set for yourself. Effective advertising is not free. It either costs in money or in effort. Get well-designed business cards and pass them out like candy. Leave four or five on store windowsills. Post them on bulletin boards anywhere you can. Make a good flyer and post that everywhere you can. Get an inexpensive, simple website with your best few small pictures and a controlled amount of information with very clear contact information and put the web address on your cards, your flyers, every other piece of advertising. Introduce yourself to local party planning agencies and when you get a referral from them, be their most cooperative, easy to work with referrals and be visible and actively pass out those cards. Once you've let the public know you're there, calls can come in at any time. To get the full value of the hard work and money you've invested, uh, getting your name before the public, you have to be the one who will answer the phone when everybody else they call uses an answering machine. I forward my business phone to my cell number while I'm out. I can be a live voice responding to inquiries while driving or buying groceries. I often get callers saying, I've called several other magicians and you're the first live person I've reached. Let's look at the person who's calling looking for picnic entertainment. In all likelihood, you'll be dealing with someone who's never done this before. A busy person who's been asked to take care of the annual company picnic and wants to get this taken care of with confidence that the task has been put to bed so they can relax and get back to doing whatever they do. They'll want to feel assured that they're in the hands of a professional, that all the details are covered and that the guy who can cover them is you. Or, if they have a large crowd, perhaps they need an additional person. Maybe they want a balloon twister and a face painter to work simultaneously. And if you can provide the additional performer at a package cost, more economically than having them go to the trouble of hiring and worrying about the others separately, it makes you look extra professional. So tell you what, if anybody wants a face, why don't you see my man Ian right over here? Step around there. So how can you stand out as the performer to hire? You want to give the impression that you care about making the caller's people happy and that you're fully able to do that. So stop telling the caller what you do. Stop telling them how good you are. Stop telling them anything and listen. Ask. Get them talking. Get their name and use it. And give them yours. If you exchange names and use their name, you're halfway to being their friend. You see, 
this guy has been calling around with a mental picture of what he wants to get. That picture probably differs from what anyone can really promise to deliver. Most of the time, they've just been told to get something to entertain the kids, and they don't know exactly what they need. But they create in their own mind a picture of what they should have. The clown is the most elegantly dressed clown they ever saw on TV. Probably Ronald McDonald or Bozo. And all the children flock around him doing perfect little song and dance routines straight out of Barney for his entire stay. The face painter. Well, he's probably never seen a face painter, but you can bet the face painter he pictures is going to be able to handle a hundred kids in an hour and will charge maybe $50 for the whole visit and keep the kids happy. Why, that means in his imagination, keep the kids all thoroughly occupied for the entire length of the event. So there's his fantasy. And he sort of knows it's just a shot in the dark, but it's the best he's got and he's sticking with it. So, diagnose his needs, and stop that. Don't start telling him how darn good you are. Tell him that you have experience in handling exactly this type of event. And in your experience, what you can do is what he needs. Do it gently, with respect. That's good customer service. The ones who get driven away by that and stick like glue to their fantasy will just be your nightmare clients anyway. And if the caller insists on continuing to call around to others once you've done a little straightening out, let him go with a hopeful heart, an invitation to visit your website, and a genuine welcome to call back. In many cases, he will, when your competitors have presented themselves far less well. You're the one entertainer he'll remember as the person who's friendly, who knew what he was talking about, who cared about making his people happy long enough to listen, the one who's done this before and can handle his needs. The occasion for your performance can have a strong impact on all of the services you offer. For instance, if you're performing a Halloween party, you'll want to tell him you can make spider balloons and snakes. If you're doing a 4th of July picnic, tell him there'll be some patriotic tricks like a mismade flag. And you'll definitely want to be familiar with the special ethnic and religious celebrations in your locale. Around here, we get all the standards, plus Cinco de Mayo, that's a Spanish celebration, Catholic First Communions, of course, and Eid, a feast that includes the Muslim fast of Ramadan. I have callers with Middle Eastern accents tell me, well, it, it's not a, a birthday, it's sort of a community celebration. And I ask, oh, is it Eid all over again? And usually I hear a happy voice responding, oh, you know Eid? And they're sold. You don't have to speak Spanish or Arabic, you just have to entertain. Plus, you get great food. Now that my kids will eat stuff that doesn't come from McDonald's, we're driving home and they say, where'd you get this big plate of goodies? And I'll say, they wouldn't let me leave without it. And I ask if they want some spring rolls or baklava or baba ganoush, and they tell me they're full because this lady took them aside while I was doing the magic show and made them eat dinner. And be sure to actually ask for the sale. You should probably ask the first time earlier than you think. Would you like to make plans on that? Or, how many hours should I make the contract out for? One common fault of less successful salesmen is that they go on talking long after the client is sold, and sometimes they go on long enough to unsell the client. This is also a good time to refer them to your website. Just having one boosts your credibility, and if it has a few really good pictures of you not just silly cartoons you found somewhere on the web, maybe even some brief performance video, you're boosted way up there. But beware, a goofy website full of meaningless animations and useless Java tricks can turn off a customer. Keep it simple, and maybe this is just my opinion, but if you're trying to improve your image as a competent adult, try to avoid looking like a simp. Miss Kissy Poo, the caring clown, will turn off any grown-up with an operating brain. 
there will be cases where the deal falls through before the event happens. Sometimes, smaller clients wake up in the morning and get a case of sticker shock when they see they've agreed to pay you what amounts to one of their employees' weekly pay for what they see as two or three hours of work. Or when they look at the whole bill for the picnic and start frantically looking for ways to cut corners. Usually, larger clients are used to paying what a professional service costs, but sometimes the owner of the local aluminum siding company is thinking, we better go back to potluck food and, uh, I don't know, get rid of the clown. For whatever reason, and you never really find out, sometimes the client doesn't follow through and actually send the deposit needed to close the deal. And I can live with a certain number of never completed bookings. I just can't live with it happening three days before the event. That's why I put down all the details the client and I have settled on in a contract and put the date on the contract by which it is required back signed along with a non-refundable deposit. And don't sign it yourself. Put in there that it's not final until it's returned and you accept it. Then you're protected if they don't return it until you've written this job off and accepted something else. The contract helps remind the client that even though you're dealing with fun and clowns and happy kids, this is a business and it helps actually get the deposit sent and it helps make sure both sides agree about what I will do, how I plan to execute my duties, what they can expect from me and what I expect from them. Until then, as far as the client is concerned, the performance is going to exactly match the fantasy, the image they had in mind before they called you. And even if you succeed in slightly adjusting that image, it gets this gets it in black and white, in plain English for everyone to see in case of a disagreement, what we've just agreed on. I don't expect I'll ever wind up in court trying to enforce it, but I do expect to be able to point to it if I get there and they want me to sit in the full sunlight in the heat of the summer, or never take a bathroom break, or take orders from ten different people. And those arguments rarely, if ever, happen. I think really the big job a contract does is actually get the deal finalized and the deposit sent.